Hey everyone, I'm Lauren Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel. Today we are answering your lore questions or your questions. They don't have to be about the lore, but most of them have been about the lore so far. So today's question is, uh, this may already have been answered elsewhere, but are orcs able to lose their powers if enough of them believe that they don't have powers? Uh, what are the limits of their abilities? So this goes into the orcs power of belief which is their collective psychic essence, which is strong enough to augment reality. Another faction that has this ability that a lot of people don't think of is Sisters of Battle. Sisters of Battle can literally pray the gods away, uh, as seen in the trailer for 9th edition or 8th edition, I think it was 8th edition, where the Sister of Battle was hit with a gauze ray that was disintegrating her arm. Her, I don't know why I said arm like that, but was disintegrating her arm and she was just like, no... And it just stopped. And then in the next scene, you see a space marine get shot by the same thing and he just gets fucking vaporized. But, you know, Sisters of Battle are weaker than space marines, even though a sister can stop a strength eight attack overhand, swing at her, and a space marine gets cut in half by it in the next scene. But what do I know? I only read the lore and watch all the, all the animations and read the comics and play all the games. But, you know, space marines, super strong, masculine men who do things, even though the sisters have a stronger military, better doctrines and almost better training and the power of faith, which can augment reality. Just saying. But that's another topic altogether. What is the orcs power of belief, the wa energy that the orcs have? So for this, it's how to explain this one because this one changes each edition, okay? So back in the early days, the orcs literally did just believe things into existence. An engine ran because they threw a few bolts into a box and thought it rattled like an engine and it could drive. Um, and a lot of games are based around this in earlier editions of Warhammer when it was more meant to be a slapstick comedy was the orcs. Uh, I mean, hell, they, they literally did the whole Margaret Thatcher joke with Gosko, Megu, or Thraka. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things in older editions all the way up until second edition where orcs weren't treated as a real threat to the galaxy. They were just, they were just soccer hooligans. That's what they were. They were drunk soccer hooligans and they believe things happen. There's a, a story from raw orcs and yes, it is rog orcs and not wa orcs because there's an R in there. And I hate the fact that there's an R in there and I'm glad it was dropped in later editions. But in that book, and one of my favorite stories, is a bunch of orcs were fixing a spaceship as it was flying through space. They had to repair its wing. So two of them walked out onto the wing, because everyone knows wings are super important for space travel. Uh, they walked out onto the wing and started repairing it by hitting it with hammers, because that's how you repair things. And then the mech boy poked his head out the window of a spaceship and told the orcs, that they can't breathe because they forgot their buckets. In which the two orcs look at each other and simultaneously die. Because they don't, they thought that they couldn't breathe. So they just died. Now that is older and it is more slapstick. And then towards the later editions, the orcs started becoming more and more serious. With the last edition of them being silly, being fifth edition, where one of the rules for them not being able to uh, take a war bike and mega armor was because the war boss would just fall over a lot. And thus the silliness stopped when they went into sixth and seventh edition, where they tried to make the orcs a serious threat because Warcraft orcs were starting to become serious. And it's the orcs are definitely not stolen from Warcraft, 100%, not stolen from there and D&D, &D. but definitely not. So they tried to make the orcs more serious and they took away the orcs gods for some reason. They were still mentioned by the orcs, but when other races started talking about gods, they never mentioned Gorkamork. And Gorkamork's existence is just kind of faded out and it was more replaced with the great green or this idea that Gorkamork are talking to them, but never actual gods like, um, they were gods, but they were only gods to the orcs and no one else knew about them, even though the orcs go on about their gods all the time. But in 8th edition, they decided to make the orcs silly again, which I personally agree with because orcs are the reason they should never take 40k seriously, because the orcs are just there for fun. 
Like they are not a huge threat to the galaxy. They are, but they're not. There's a whole complication there, but they're more like, we're here to have fun, beat some skulls and fight some people. And the best way we can do that is to go to them and beat them up. So their power of belief, let's get into that. Originally, it was anything that they believed. In fact, you could throw a water balloon filled with white paint at them and tell them that they died because white is the color of death. And they would believe you, they would die. But in newer editions, that doesn't work too well, but the orcs themselves can augment reality. Uh, and we see this in, um, oh, what, 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 what was it? One of the audiobooks, one of the really good audiobooks that just came out for orcs. Uh, it has a, it has Tolka in it. Oh my gods, why am I forgetting its name? It is, oh wow, I'm for... I'm just completely blinking. Prophets of the Wah. Thank you, Brain, for finally working. Um, but in Prophets of the Wah, the orcs uh, can explain things uh, and have a universal understanding of how the entire universe works, but they don't have the knowledge of knowing what it is. And the orcs instinctually know their psychic powers and instinctually know who the biggest orc is at any one time. They know who the boss is and if the boss is alive at any one time. Um, that doesn't stop people from challenging the boss and saying that they're bigger than the boss and other orcs from believing them. So the power of belief is, is something that can be manipulated by the orcs and others that know about the orcs' powers of belief, but it's not something that's directly they control per se it's something that they perceive and believe in so their power of belief really extends to how much and how many orcs there are if you don't have enough orcs that have a collective belief that an engine will work it probably won't work my shirt is riding up but it probably won't work that's how you get snake bites and the older forms of orcs which run around with spears and run around um, riding like spiders and shit like that. Like the, um, uh, the snake bites are a good example of this. And there's like squig herders and things of that nature, which sounds like a massive racist insult, but it isn't. It just sounds like it. Um, you get those kinds of orcs. But as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, more and more population, you start getting orcs that can manipulate their psyche and unlock things that they didn't know they knew until enough boys were strong enough to augment reality so that they did know. And I know this sounds weird, but this is how the orcs' brains and psychology works. The more boys you get, the smarter the orcs get. So now they can make engines, they can make trucks, they can make tractors, they can make weapons of war, and they'll start waging war on each other. And that's really where orcs love. They, they love just waging war on each other. It's fun for them. But then their population gets bigger and bigger, and then they start getting things like war bosses, clan leaders, and uh, warlords. And the second they start getting those, those guys can declare a wa, which is a collective psychic um, overload of the orc senses, which drives them to fight another race. Uh, that being like the Eldar, the Imperium, uh, more orcs of a different um, system. So it doesn't have to be a different race. It could be a different orc clan. And they will all unify and build everything needed for this Wa. And they can feel when a Wa is coming and feel when a Wa is being manipulated into coming, as seen in Prophets of the Wa. And they can then push themselves into um, collective natures of building shit, understanding shit that they didn't know they knew. And then they can start manipulating uh, engines to work, um, fuel pumps to work, guns that have no firing pins or anything to work because all of them believe that they work. And then if you get millions of orcs, you'll start seeing space travel. Now, orcs are the masters of space travel. I know this is weird to believe, but orcs can take any one ship from any particular species in the entire galaxy and make it work. War Sphere from the crew, they can make it work. Tau uh, Dreadnought or Custodian, they can make it work. And yes, the Tau's, one of the Tau's biggest vessels is called the Custodian. And it's very awkward because there are Custodians in the world. They could take a hive ship off the Tyranids and strap some rockets to it and make it work. They can steal Imperial vessels, which is their kind of go-to since there's billions of them. Actually, there's probably trillions of them at this point. But that's their go-to vessels. And they can even make their own cold rocks and mega fortresses. 
And then uh, once there's quadrillions of them, like we saw in uh, the War of the Beast series, orcs become so smart that they can negotiate for the surrender of Terra. And this is where things get wild and out of hand and the part where orcs shouldn't be. They'll start getting prime orcs, gigantic orc warlords that represent each of the six paths of the orcs. And you'll start seeing like super hyper intelligent orcs that can manipulate reality, know exactly how to do it. They can open up warp rifts. They can activate uh, anti-gravity. They can teleport. They can do all sorts of shit that everyone is terrified of. Um, and that is the power of their belief. But could you manipulate that to make them unbelieve something? The answer is no. The orcs are so stupid and so asinine that it's like trying to convince a drunk person not to do something. You have to take away the ability of them doing it in order to stop them from doing it. It's like taking away a drunk person's keys so they don't accidentally murder like eight people while driving home. But you have to uh, create steps to stop them, like killing their war boss, destroying their leaders, uh, destroying their spaceships, locking them on a single planet, pitting them up against something else to lower their numbers so they become stupid again. You have to control their population, otherwise they become insanely intelligent. Like, for instance, will the orcs eventually overcome the Tyranids? Yes, they will become so big and so numerous and so smart that they will overcome the Tyranids. The Tyranids have a set level of intelligence that they are masters at, but the orcs have an infinite potential. It's kind of like the whole Saitama versus, if you are caught up in One Punch Man, where you know that he has infinite power, infinite potential, where you know that if you pit him up against something that has a limit, Saitama will overcome that limit. Orcs will overcome that limit in 40k and eventually just destroy everything, unless at an earlier step, you kill their war bosses, you stop them in their tracks, you have to use uh races will unify to stop orcs from reaching a certain number so yeah the orcs power of belief super fucking powerful they could literally if you told them that demons don't exist and you convince them that demons don't exist demons will not attack their ships and demons will just not attack orc ships in general because they know that orcs can become masters of killing demons see um Tuska the demon killer, who is now residing in a corn world, fighting for all eternity and getting bigger and bigger, which means he could eventually find Kurnak, kill Kurnak, grab the axe of corn, and kill corn. That would be a good story. That's the way I want corn to die. But yeah. And can the orcs kill gods? The answer is yes. In earlier editions, they killed the Nightbringer. The Nightbringer at full strength. They killed him. Like, that is that is a thing that has never been referenced again. So technically it's still canon, which the canon of 40k is always up to interpretation. But in earlier editions of Warhammer 40k, Gork and Bork were approached by the, by the Nightbringer when the Nightbringer was at the peak of his power, when he was killing other gods and devouring them and becoming super strong. Uh, Kigarath tricked um, the Nightbringer into going after Gork and Bork. Gorgamork beat the shit out of the Nightbringer so hard that he exploded and all races in the galaxy, except the orcs, fear death. Because the orcs killed death. That's still technically canon. Have fun knowing that. The orcs killed death. So that's the power of their belief. <sighs> this one was longer than usual. I, I don't know. It's crazy. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to the orcs. They're one of my favorite races for lore. I don't like their models too much, but I fucking love their lore. They are just the funniest things in the world. And I know you guys love orcs. So if you have any comments, comments in the section, comment. I'm going to say comments again because I did. So three comments. That's what your minimum is. Somebody write in the comments, three comments. So I know that you've watched until the end. <sighs> anyway, I'm Norn Queen Alexis. I love you guys. Bye.